All right, we're here with Dr. Joan Rosenberg, and what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the tables, and Joan's going to ask me a few questions. <laughs> okay, here we go. All go, right. Joan. Okay, so, Bo, I know a lot of men come up to you, and they are so grateful for kind of the model that you are for them. Mm. Part of that has to do with the attractiveness that they feel towards you. And they talk about bow crushes. Oh, got it. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that there are a lot of men I've heard talk about feeling kind of having kind of a man crush on you. <laughs> but, it, but it comes from how you model your expressiveness in front of them. Mm. Talk about you and feeling, ha having access to those feelings. Yeah. And, and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, well, you know, I, as you know, I've trained really hard and for many, many years with great, great coaches, you know, acting coaches and, 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 and I hate to use the word acting coaches because there's so much more than that. Right. movement coaches, you know, you know them, the best in the world. And the one thing that they trained me to do and all performers was to have access to all your emotions. So they would describe it like this. They described emotion as if it was electricity. Okay. And the electricity was like behind these walls. And all we needed was an outlet to plug into that emotion. Right. And we didn't care what emotion came. Right? Right. We cared that emotion came. Right. So we didn't care. If we plugged in a toaster, we got electricity. If we plugged in a light, we got light. They wanted you to have, they wanted me to have access to my emotions. They didn't want me to control the emotions. Right. You know what I mean? They right. didn't want me to go, well, I think I'll cry here, and then I think I'll get mad here. They just wanted you to have access to all emotions, and whatever came up, you didn't fight that. You let that happen. Okay. Men are very practiced, at, and they're socialized to shut it down. Yeah. Don't go there. Don't show it. Just keep it shut down. Yeah. What do you say to that? Yeah. Because um, you don't do that. No, no, I'm not. Yeah. I've, you know, I've really been trained to drop that armor that we use to protect ourselves. You know, and men are great at it. Men, often men like who are on stage or speakers, they'll want to be vulnerable. Like that's a big buzzword these days, yep. vulnerability, right? Yep. Like you should be vulnerable. And then we start heading for vulnerability, and I think that's a mistake every time. It looks kind of wimpy on a mm -hmm. man to go toward vulnerability. I think you go toward the most courageous act, you know, mm -hmm. which is to open this vessel up, right. which is to express this thing, which then makes you vulnerable. Yes. And I think everyone mistakes vulnerability with crying. So often, not the, right, not right, right, right? So not I'll, that. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I'll get men a lot of times going, "Well, I really want to cry on stage," and I go, "Well, that's going to be a problem." <laughs> right. It's not a, right. Vulnerability is not crying. I think of vulnerability as an openness and a willingness to to learn or to be hurt. So you're actually opening yourself up. Yeah. Um, and and that's what vulnerability really is. Yeah. Um, but it, so now I've watched you have the the feelings are rush up. Your, your lip quivers, you yep. get a little bit tearful, your face gets flush, but you stay present with the feeling. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a big mistake too, is like whenever those emotions come up, I remember I used to be like that 20, 25 years ago. Whenever emotion came up, I thought it was bad and I would push it, contain it and push it down. When I, well, I was trained and I was taught to do not do that. And you know what my teacher said? Roy London used to say this. He used to go, you just ruined what God handed you. God handed you that emotion and you destroyed it and you ruined it for all of us. You know Whoa. what I mean? Right? Okay, right. And I don't think he was a religious man, but, no. but he would say, God just showed up and you told him no. Right. So, so then what do you have to say about, particularly for men, women do it too though. Yeah, yeah. But, so what do you have to say to men about staying present with the feeling because they because everybody's you're out in front of the stage and everybody's seeing you go that you know the flush fl fl getting flush you're they can tell you're in it and you're yeah. present with the feeling and they know just to sit there and to be present with you yep but how did you so a boy says you know you don't just yeah. don't yeah. push that gift away yeah so how did you, how do you stay present with your feeling? What would you say about that? Man, it, that's the most courageous act is to hang in there for just a few seconds more. 
and a few seconds more and a few seconds more. Just let it happen. Right. So you were kind of riding the wave. You, I, always, I always talk about riding yeah. the wave of feeling. Yep. And right. how long you, you say it takes? It's uh, when, when a feeling, we actually feel our feelings in our body first. It, it can go kind of our head. We're thinking about something and then we feel it. Uh, lots of times it's actually, it, we actually notice it in our body first and then we kind of give a name to it. Yeah. And, and what I always talk about is this idea of riding the wave of feeling. Yeah. And so you just, you literally, you never hear about feelings coming down. You always hear about feelings coming up. Yeah. So it's kind of body up. So what you want to do is you just actually want to ride the wave yep. of the feeling. And it lasts roughly 90 seconds. Right. So I think that's where men get, we get a little bit nervous. Okay. I think we think it's never going to go away. Right. <laughs> we think we're going to live in this weepy emotional place uh, uh, and we're not no no <laughs> and what i like to say is at some point you're gonna have to blow your nose you're gonna have to get up and go to the bathroom you're gonna have to go do something yeah. different and it's gonna break yeah and so so right so think of it as just you're gonna ride one or more waves of whatever the feeling is and it's not gonna last those each individual wave is not gonna last more than roughly 90 seconds yeah. and if you think of it like this like that's your connective tissue as a man that is your connective tissue other men will follow you into battle. Uh, women will help you build that battlefield. They'll, they'll take down the forest to, to help you build it if you're allowing yourself to be human. Which, you know, as speakers, most people want to be a speaker with no humanity. Just a speaker. Well, if you're a speaker with no humanity, you're not going to be a speaker very long. Right, right. A actually, what I love saying is that is that if we only express our thoughts, absent the emotion, yeah. that's like Elmer's glue. Mm. When the emotion is present, then it's like super glue. That's actually what allows us to bond them more closely. Right. And that's why men get expired, in inspired or women get inspired right. and want to be with somebody right. because it, that connective tissue yeah. is the feeling. Yeah. It's the super glue. It's super what glue. bonds us together. You're totally right. That's exactly what it is. I mean, think back to the last time any of you watching us that you were kind of turned off by somebody or not particularly attracted to them for some reason just because there was nothing there to be attracted to. They might have been good looking, but there was no attraction. And then that person, you saw them crack just for a second and you went like this. <gasps> And you fell in love with that person. This right. happens daily, right? Right. If, if somebody allows that crack to happen. Right. You know where it happens a lot? In sports, it happens a lot because they're so trying to win. And they're given everything they got. And they're strong men or women, these athletes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a ballet dancer. It could be a gymnast. Um, they're giving so much of themselves. That that's true vulnerability, right? Right, that's absolutely, yeah. But yet they're strong and muscular and, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. stoic. Mm -hmm. But the minute that they're, ugh, they crack a little bit is the minute you fall in love with them. You just go, oh, and you're attracted to them. Well, same is true for you. Same is true for you as a human, as a man, as a speaker, as a leader. The moment that you're, you have the ability to allow that to happen, don't mess with it too much, just allow it to happen and go forth, people will follow you. People will do you know, what you're asking them to do. And they'll help you build, you know, your company and your career. That's great, Joe. I love it. Good question. Great. Good. Right. Thanks. You bet.